tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello, first of all, a brief hint what this tutorial is basically about. The key thing is the cache and alembic cache, and the other thing is Bifrost liquid container, uh, switching it from simulation, where the default is, to mesh property. So if you're familiar with this anyway, just skip this tutorial, you know, you know what I'll be talking about now. And we start with a fresh scene. In computer animation, it's often very elegant to start with something lean and clean and something you know how to handle, and then convert it to another geometry or convert keyframes to another type of keyframe, etc. And the main menu for this is modify and convert. It's a huge menu, really. You can convert NURBS to polygons, etc. And you can texture do, to geometry. But I want to talk about cloth to liquid today, which is kind of unusual. Cloth to mesh, that is, cloth, a cloth simulation to a polygon object, is quite often used. But uh, we'll go for a very strange thing today, which is not trivial at all but um, is a lot of fun and we create a cloth and convert it to water. So let's start with something which is cloth-like, <laughs> like uh, this cube here and we make it a little bit wider and deeper and slightly thinner just like this. For deformation we need lots of geometry Think that's enough for the start and we move it up because it's gonna fall down anyway so this is gonna be our cloth and now we make it cloth by going to FX and N cloth and we create N cloth now it does fall down and you barely see any cloth behavior until you look <laughs> at the bottom uh, and uh, well it's it's starting to deform if you want another material here for the end cloth you go to the presets and choose for example airbag or honey or silk but I stick to the default because this is a straightforward deformation here actually I'd like a little bit more geometry right here okay so this is cloth now and we want it to interact with a sphere for example the standard thing would be a table which is a little bit so, so it's a tablecloth but uh, this is a little bit trivial here and in order to make this collide we need to use the end cloth create passive collider because the sphere is not going to react it's just been felt by the cloth so it's a passive collider in order to use this command at the very bottom left you see how you use it you need to um, select the polygon mesh and the end cloth or particles or whatever so we need to select this here and the end cloth and now we go to end cloth create passive collider and when we run the simulation now we see that the collision is happening this is uh, very nice indeed and of course depending on the material it takes longer or less long until it falls down let me extend the frame frame rate here to 400 so we see a little bit more what's happening this is almost real time what does it do down here interesting yeah and as you can see one of the things with cloth is that it uh, reacts to gravity which is 9.8 this d default you can of course change this and it interacts with itself so it doesn't interpenetrate itself so this part here for example doesn't go inside the through the other part they feel each other and uh, they uh, behave like real cloth 
here. This is the beauty of cloth simulation, really. So what we'll do now is we want to convert this to a liquid. And you can try to convert it to a liquid by just going to Bifrost and create a liquid. But I'm not going to do this because it doesn't work for me. It creates a liquid, but uh, the liquid doesn't follow the geometry. That's why, and that's basically something you should always consider uh, because it's so convenient. You just export this simulation here, which is always very intense to calculate for Maya, to an Alembic file, which doesn't need any calculation at all, and then re-import it into the scene. I'll show you what I mean. I uh, select this object here. This is the object which falls down and collides with a sphere. And now I go to Cache, Alembic Cache, and I export the selection to an Alembic file. And uh, I have an Alembic folder here in my Maya default project, and I call this ncloth for water. Now the Alembic cache is being generated. Up to the keyframe, uh, up, up to the frame range I uh, chose. Now I create a new scene. And in a new scene, I go back to cache, Alembic cache, and I open the Alembic, the end cloth for water. So this thing might look familiar to you, and it behaves familiar. It behaves like in the simulation. But it is not a simulation anymore, it's keyframes actually. It's an Alembic file. So the sphere is not necessary anymore, the deformation is just fine. Now, water. Select this object. Now I go to Bifrost Fluids and create a liquid from it. And what happens now is our Alembic object falls down and the water falls down as well, but it doesn't deform like the original geometry, and that's actually what I want, because I want to get rid of this Lambert shaded material here and just have water here. And the water, it doesn't look like water here in the viewport, but you can uh, tick on voxels, that makes it a little bit watery, really, and when you introduce a light, like the Skydome light here for Arnold, you can render it and you, then you see that it's kind of water. Like this. But it doesn't deform like a original object. We need to select the liquid. We're in the Bifrost liquid container and this is the node we need. And we exchange this from simulation to mesh property. So the water behaves like the mesh. And you already see that it's sort of behaving like the mesh. It follows the mesh. And I think we can hide the cube now. H. So this is the water we have. And you might want to criticize that it has a hole in here. Let me change the sky dome light so it shows as a black background here. This is the AI sky dome light shape. You scroll a little bit down and visibility just move the camera slider to zero. So we don't see the white light in the back but a black environment. So why does it have that hole? Well this has to do with the resolution of our water. These effects here are really water-like. Let's wait until it goes down. Maya has to think quite a bit now for simulating water effects. Now it's starting to slide down. And it sure does remind you of our cloth object. And now we need to find the scale the scene scale, so to say. And uh, I know where it is. It's under Biofrost Liquid Properties Container. And uh, it's called Master Voxel Size. 
by default it sets to 0 0.5 let's set it to 1 you see odd things happening because it's so crude now if you reduce the master voxel size to 0 0.2 you get certainly less holes but the simulation takes much longer because there are many more particles liquid particles involved now you see it does not show holes maybe it does when it touches the sphere yes it does and if you want, want to avoid this you need to reduce this value to maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 the ev evaluation time is much longer in that case rendering water is something completely different and I think I did quite a few tutorials about sexy rendering of water have a nice day bye bye